Apart from the three main big features added to Photoshop CC, there's always additional improvements, which are also called JDI features, or Just Do It features, and these are almost all user requests, and most of the time they are not completely new features, but just updates or improvements to already existing features. Some of you might remember that in the previous update to Photoshop CC in 14.1 version, we got the generator feature, which is under File Generate. And that means whenever you want to save out automatically files based on layers from Photoshop, you just have to make sure that in the file names you have file extensions as well. And now the improvement to generator, first of all, is that you can now have layer names up to 255 characters. Originally it was only 64 characters, so now we have much longer file names that we can create. That means we can save several versions of the same file or same uh, layer. In this case, as you can see, I save three versions, a normal, a 250% version and a 500% version of this original logo. And if I go to a uh, bridge, I can see it created this generator assets folder by default. And inside here, I can see the three different size version. So normal is 321 pixel width, the medium is 803, and then large is 1605. And because the layer is a smart object with an Illustrator file source, now it's also an improvement or a new JDI feature is that if you have a smart object with an Illustrator file source or vector file source, then Generator will be able to create a perfect high quality version even if you go above 100%. So if you render out higher sizes than the actual size inside the Photoshop document, it will still be able to create the nice crisp uh, sharp edges version from the original vector image. Let me go back to Photoshop and show you also that when you have a vector shape, now with the direct selection tool, you don't have to click on the edge of this to be able to see the uh, anchor points. It's enough if you click inside it. So if I click on the actual shape, it already shows me all the anchor points. That's also a quite useful time saver. Also, we have another option for recently used swatches. So you can now in the swatches panel, you can find your recently used swatches. I really like this feature as well. Plus, if you create a new document under File New, you will find a quick way to change the background color. So you can choose a background color like red, for example. And if I click on OK, my new document will come with this new background color. Also, instead of double clicking on the background layer and renaming it, to turn it into a normal layer, it's enough to click on the lock icon. So if I click on that, it immediately turns it into a normal layer. In the preferences, we have also a new feature under interface. You can find the enable narrow options bar. Now this is specifically useful for anyone who uses Photoshop on a small screen, like laptop, for example, because if you choose this, then most of the options will have narrower option bar. So let me show you a comparison because this only shows when you turn off Photoshop and run it the next time. So instead of doing that, I wanted to show you here with this little comparison. So for a couple of tools that uh, most commonly use tools, we can see that the normal version is on top and below it, I have the narrow options bar version. So some options like align got its own icon. So if you use the narrow options bar, it will actually be only an icon instead of having the whole name there and the tick. So in case of magic wand, that actually saves quite a lot of space. So instead of entire alias, contiguous, sample or layers, you just have these little icons here. And the same with gradient tool as well, the reverse dither and transparency, they all have their own unique icons now. And last but not least, if you go to the Edit Fill option, here you can find new features for the scripted patterns. One of them is the Tree option, but then you also have the Picture Frame, 
and place along path. Let me just show you how the tree looks like once I click on OK. Also a new feature that for the scripted pattern we actually have a preview. So now we can place in trees into our Photoshop documents or I would say uh, it's rather generating them with this feature so I can choose a tree uh, maybe this one I can set up where the light source is going to be and um, use custom colors for everything custom shading I can randomize the shape as well and once I'm ready I just click on OK and it will place this image in with full transparency this can be very useful for architects whenever they create visuals and want to just uh, add some fancy trees to make it a bit more realistic. So this nice image was created from Photoshop by just simply using the scripted pattern. And also it's worth mentioning that under the hood Photoshop got much faster with the Mercury graphics engine performance boost. So for instance if you have really big images and you run commands like smart sharpen now the GPU is going to help out and make it uh, the whole uh, process much faster. So these were my favorite additional improvements, but if you want to see all the rest of the JDIs added in this round, then make sure you check out the list below.